Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to a series about holding patterns. My name is Dennis, also known as Pilot Hoy. I'm a real life 737 first officer, and I'm going to make a series about how to identify the proper holding procedure and how to fly uh, a proper holding. And for that, I'm using uh, a 737 simulating uh, simulation. Uh, using the rose mode or the, or the HSI only. We're going to first uh, set up our uh, conditions to pick up a hold. The first thing we are going to do is we're going to practice and how to identify and fly a direct holding procedure. So we're going to start with the instructions from the chart or HC. We are going to fly a holding at the Pampas VOR, which I have set, tuned and identified. And we're going to fly an inbound uh, radial of 270. So to visualize this, here's the pompous VR. I'm going to show you how this is going to look like. This is the pompous VR, and we're going to perform a holding pattern. So how does a holding pattern look? Probably you do already know that because you're watching the video how to fly it, how to fly them but I'll show you how you properly identify and fly it. So we're gonna start with a holding pattern with radial nah, a little bit more like this, 270 inbound. So this means that we are going to fly the fly a 270 radial. This is not a heading, but a radial. In order to fly the radial towards the VOR, so the radial is the 270 uh, uh, radial. We need to fly a heading in this case of 090. Zero, zero. And that's because the, the heading we are flying to the VOR is the reciprocal, so 180 degrees difference between the radial. And after we've flown the radial inbound, we're of course going to fly the radial outbound and then we're going to turn back. And we, have, we make some turns like this. And you got yourself a draw up holding pattern. So we fly in the radial 270 inbound towards VOR with a course of 090, which is 180 degrees difference. So the reciprocal. And after we are turning outbound, we do fly a heading of 270. And the heading of, of the, I must say, the radial, the amount radial, that is what we set in our course selector. So we put 270 in a course selector and we identified the VOR. I'm going to now turn the aircraft towards the VOR to start our holding uh, procedure. And back to my little drawing. So again, we are turning towards the VOR. As you can see, we are in the sector somewhere over here. And you can already guess for yourself what the appropriate holding entry is going to be. If you are uh, familiar with the holding procedures, this is an easy one and you can already see it. But I'm going to teach you a method that I use. And uh, when I had trouble uh, identifying holding procedures, this was uh, yeah, a, a helpful method of identifying the proper hold. But the, the problem is with uh, tricks and methods, you need to understand it how you need to fly it, so how you visualize it. So try to draw up the image I just did. So this image, try to draw it up in your head and while well, using your instruments. Because I'm not gonna use the map, mo um, the map mode in the simulation to identify where we're at, but the instruments, so solely the instruments. Well, if you look at the, our instrumentation, the HSI, which we're using, using the VOR and ROSE mode, you can, and we're steering the aircraft towards the, the VOR at the moment. You can see that we have the VOR pointers. We are in the flying towards the VOR, so with the two indication. And I'm going to make a little screenshot. And I'm going to teach you how you can visualize mm -hmm. what I just drawn in paint in the in the airplane. So if we So what we're gonna do is, if you look, 
If you look at our instrumentation, you can see that we're currently flying towards the VOR. And we all know that there are three sectors for the holding procedure and how you can identify the correct sector you are in is actually pretty easy. Because what we can do is we're currently inbound VOR, then we, we add 70, so 0, 070 degrees, which is over here. We draw a line in our head, of course, and we draw a line from our heading towards the center of the aircraft, and we can identify our, our, proceed, our holding entrances. So we have the direct, the offset, also known as the teardrop, and the parallel. Currently, in the simulation, we're still inbound. We're joining one DME out, so we have some time. And the first thing we did is we identified the VOR. We know what the radial is going to be, we're going to hold, so radial 270, which gives us a, a heading of 090 once we're established. And the outbound course for the outbound leg is a heading of 270. So 270 is what we're going to fly. So if we draw 270, we look at our instrument, 270 is over here, the core selector. It is in the direct entry sector. It's that easy. It's really that easy. And I, I learned this method from Captain Joe, so all the credits go to Captain Joe. He uses his thumb by creating a surface uh, 20 degrees, so like this. So you can do that, that's helpful. But I, what I find, find easier is those indicators here and here. Those help you, because this is 45 degrees, this is 90 degrees, etc., etc. So you can use those markers to identify uh, 90 degrees, so you only need two steps above it to have 70 degrees. So we identify the holding procedure, and we all know a direct entry holding, or maybe you don't know it yet, but a direct entry holding, we fly direct towards the VOR or the waypoint. Standard holding is right turns, fly the outbound leg for a minute without wind correction, and turn back to the VOR again. These are all standard rate uh, turns, and I'm going to show you in a second what I would mean with that. As you can see, I draw the image, and it's accurate where we are. So if we move the aircraft, the aircraft to speed up the procedure a little bit, so we move the aircraft towards the beacon, you see we are 2.3 DME out, and we wait until 1 DME, and you can see when, once we get closer to the VOR, the pointers of the VOR start to to move a little bit, and as soon as we are flying over the VOR, they will drop, and the two indication change from the front indication. Because we are in the air and the VOR is on the ground, we start our turn a little bit early, so I start our right turn now to 270, which is our outbound leg, because we overflown the VOR. As you can see by the VOR points, it just moved from to, to, fr from, to, to from, and you can see the VOR pointer needles, they start start changing as well. And they indicate the position of the VOR, of course. So we start at a turn, and as soon as we parallel the VOR, and we can see that by our needles, they will drop. And you see the radio coming alive now. But you see the needles that will drop towards the 0, 9 or 0, so 90 degrees indicate, indicator. It may, might drop a little bit under, underneath, and then once it gets back, we start a timing for one minute, because that's the, m the moment we are flying a beam, the VOR. So how is this looking on the map, if you would visualize it, like this. We are still in our turn, and we are not a beam, the VOR. So as you can see, we are flying, still making our tour, turn to the 270 heading, because our outbound heading is 270 because our radial we are flying is 270 race protocol 090 so outbound we fly 270 and we are almost at 90 degrees from the VOR as you can see and you can see that our pointers are going to move up again or down depends on the section the direction you're looking at so we are now flying parallel to the VOR and we start a one minute timer. As you can see, we just passed the VOR. Our timer is uh, one minute. And after that minute, 
we're going to fly the radial inbound again. But to fly the 270 radial inbound, so towards the, the VOR, we're going to fly a course of 090, or zero, as I just explained. Because the radial is, you need to see a radial as uh, a wheel, so you can see it here. And it has 360 degrees of spokes. And to fly the 270 spoke towards the VOR, we are flying a course of 090 in this case. Uh, in the beginning it's uh, quite difficult, but once you get the hang out of it, it's, it's really easy, I promise you. So we are approaching the one minute marker. I'm going to start a turn a little bit early at 58 seconds. So now the 090 right turns because we are flying a standard holding. And the one thing that's important when you're flying a holding base on a VOR, a VOR is on the ground, but we're in the air. So this part, the other way around the camera, the part between us, the airplane, and the VOR is the slant range. And because it's a slant range, it means that when you can calculate based on formulas, ah, there's Amsterdam, you can calculate based on, on formulas what the, the height is uh, that we need to start our turn. But a good um, rule of thumb is uh, with a low altitude like this, like 6,000 feet, about one DME uh, before approaching uh, the VOR. Now, as you can see, the pointers are approaching our course. We reset the timer, of course. Radial is alive, it's moving in now. So this is the radial, the 270 radial. It's moving towards the center. And as you can see, we might have a little bit of over overshooting the first time, and that's okay. Look, it looks like this, little overshoot, because we started our holding a little bit above the, the VOR. So I'm going to correct it a little bit. So to show you that the next uh, next round is a perfect holding. You don't want to uh, turn too much, because the radial is going to move in again, of course, and we're only 3.6 DMEs, as you can see here, 3.5 now out from the VOR. And the closer you get, the more sensitive it gets. So I'm staring back already a little bit because I don't want to overshoot it. And you can see here what we are doing is exactly what we're doing here. So I'm going to try to make the, the second one even more perfect. As you can see now is that we are flying over the VOR in a few seconds because we're now at 1.5 getting near so we're off shooting it so we're starting our turn at 1 dme or 0 0.8 starting it now i can start now to 70 again so again we're we've flown the inbound portion the radial 270 and we're turning away from the vr now by a right turn and the heading we're flying is the same as the radial we are we want to fly so 270 this so that's easy so you can see again that the pointers are moving, we are moving. And if you look at the, the map, what we are doing, you can see we started our turn again. So you can see the, the pointers there are, they are, um, are moving towards the 90 degree indicator. And those are based on our course, of course. And as soon as they are 90 degrees out with our course, we are beam the VOR and we start our timer again. And again, this is in no wind condition. You can see that they are approaching a 90 degree angle. You can, um, you can see it by the dots starting the timer. Because the dots, they uh, are lined up, of course, with the course. So the dots are 90 degrees. But if you want to identify uh, 90 degrees once you're flying, um, once you're flying this heading, for example, you can also use those indicators. So those are 45 degrees out on each step. So you can quickly identify 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Well, our timer is moving. We are moving. And this is not the most perfect holding of my life, but this is about teaching you the method. This is about teaching uh, how to do it. So we ignore everything the, the FMC says to us. We ignore all the configurations 
because this is solely based on training. So we're approaching the one minute mark in a second. And at 58 or something, I'm going to start the turn again towards the inbound radial, which is the 0, 0.9 or 0, because it's the racy procal, so 180 degrees difference from the inbound radial. So we're going to set our timer and I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Because you guys don't have all day, <laughs> and you don't have to watch me perform holdings all day. And again, how this looks on the map that your instructor will see in the simulator, it looks like this, or you can see on flight radar when you're uh, performing holdings in real life. See the radios alive again. Stopping the fast forward. We're intercepting the the radio, which is alive again. Making a little correction. Because once you you get there, perfectly line up. Like this. The next one is going to be perfect. But they, these are all within a range of the requirement to form a holding for your airline selection, for your assessment, or for your simulator training or your IFR training. A little overshoot. But this is basically how you do perform a direct entry holding. I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope uh, it helped you a lot. Stay tuned for part two in which I'm going to teach you how to perform an offset uh, entry holding and part three, a parallel entry holding. So stay tuned. And as you can see, we are just over it. So we turn again to seven zero. We can do this for days, but we are not going to do that. So I hope you enjoyed my video. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. Like and subscribe for more and good luck.